遅く草刈り野菜バージョン死ねえ<笑>あえてよかったよ<笑>ポン魔物か After 40 hours of fighting for their lives, the S rank forest dragon launched its fire breath, destroying the entire field as the adventurers ran away. At the same time, Alan, an ugly, disgusting, miserable farmer, was looking at his big eggplants, wishing he wasn't so small. Once he was done harvesting all of them, the god of the world maxed out all of his farming skills, and his friend Testa was jealous since even his fishing skill was level 10, when he's the one who's supposed to be the fisherman. Just as he let those words out, the god of the world offered him the ability to evolve all of his farming skills, and after merging all his abilities, he was bestowed with the broken nature lover status. And his attack level reached 69, 420. However, Alan remembered that he needed to get his crops to the capital, and as they were traveling, he saw the dragon launching its fire breath at the adventurers, but they were too weak to fight back. Wondering how to help them, Alan threw his carrot to distract the dragon for a second. But the carrot pierced through the dragon and exploded it in an instant. All of the adventurers wondered what the f they just witnessed, and even Alan was shocked by his own powers. But decided to just keep going on his way. As soon as he got to the royal capital, he saw a hot girl being kidnapped. And when the bandit tried escaping, Alan launched towards him and saved her in his arms. However, the bandit rushed towards him, but Alan dodged his knife attack before throwing him down, opening the girl's floodgates. While they were arresting the man, Alan realized that he'd gained the ability to see the future. But the girl thanked him for saving her life. However, a bell started going off, and before she could ask for his name, he called her ugly and ran away from her. After selling all of his crops, the guards stopped him from leaving the city, and the girl he saved appeared, introducing herself as Follies, the princess of the royal capital. He wondered how an ugly lady dog could be a princess, but she told him that he looks like he hasn't showered in two years. So she ordered him to give her his name. He introduced himself as Lil Wayne, but remembered that was the name he gave for his little sword. So she asked him if he wants to be her royal guard, but he told her absolutely not. However, that was what he wished to say, and tried telling her that he was more into tomatoes, but she wondered why he would ever decline the high pay. So Alan told her that he only cared about being a farmer for the rest of his life, and after hearing those words, Follies offered to give him the giant royal field that was over 33,000 square feet. When he wondered why she would go that far for him, she told him that he defeated a guy who had an average status over 500. But Alan had no idea what an average status was. So she told him that ordinary people have a status of 50, while a knight captain is at 600, with the legendary hero having a status of 1000. She wondered what his status was, but he knew that he definitely couldn't show her. Just then, the adventurers came back, saying that the forest dragon was blown up with a f carrot by a guy who was driving a wagon. When Follies felt like she was getting deja vu, Alan's wagon was half a mile away, but she swore that she won't give up on finding him. As he was driving back, he was glad to finally get away from her ugly, weird face. At the king's castle, the captain of the knights told the king that the hell zone was opening. And that the attack from the dragon, along with the princess's abduction, were all diversions to distract them. And after the legendary hero died fighting the demon lord Macbeth, he told both of them to run away. Back at his village, Alan tried opening his door, but broke handle before going inside. After just three seconds of relaxing, his friends started banging for him to open up, screaming that there's a huge swarm of monsters coming towards their home. Alan was glad he was finally going to be done with this miserable life. But remembered that he was supposed to have the annual harvest tomorrow and ran straight towards his field. When he got to his plants, he saw a huge army of demons heading towards the royal capital without a single one of them caring for his village. He was glad that Folly's ugly face was finally going to get eliminated. But when he realized that the royal capital's destruction would mean the loss of all his sails, he knew that he had to save her again. As the king and the princess were riding on their horses, they arrived at a dead end. But Cecile revealed that this was their destination. As soon as he let those words out, he released a magical whip towards the king, knocking him down. The soldiers readied their swords, but Cecile released his magic to eliminate them instantly, sprouting giant wings from his back. This was the opportunity he'd been waiting for, and revealed his true identity. As the new demon king, Romeo Van Dead. When a soldier tried attacking him, he was impaled with his magical energy before passing away. His ultimate goal was to become the new king of this country to control everyone. But he needed both of them to 
before he could achieve it. As he summoned an energy sphere and launched it towards them, the king released his ultimate defense barrier. But the magical orb began breaking the shields away, so Follies began using all of her magical powers to reinforce his shield. However, Romeo unleashed his ultimate skill with a dark snake flying to pierce all the shields away. The king's stamina was beginning to dwindle down, and Romeo managed to break away all of her shields. As he activated his over-darkness skill, Alan leapt from the sky and struck the ground with his hoe, unleashing his subsoil plowing ability. A fissure began ripping the ground apart to neutralize his attacks, and when Folly saw his face, he realized that he should have let her ugly ass die before saving the king. Romeo wondered who he was, so Alan screamed that he was a farmer and began explaining how he was just trying to repair the soil because all of the nutrients had dried up. However, Romeo vanished behind him, but Alan caught his blade with his and threw him aside into the wall. He realized that Alan was the person who'd been getting in the way of his plans, so he turned his wings into spears that sucked the souls of all his comrades, transforming him into a giant draconic beast. After revealing his final form, Folly saw that he was level 78 and realized that her new boyfriend was about to die before she developed plot with him. As Romeo unleashed his deadly aura and rushed to punch Alan, he uppercutted him off, defeating him with a single blow and making all the demons run away. The following day, the king congratulated him for saving the entire country, but Alan already knew how this was going to end up, so before he could run away, the king asked him, if he would serve their country. Alan tried saying he was just an ugly farmer, but the king told him that he'll even give him his daughter if he accepts. But Follies already knew Alan was more into vegetables. She told him that to reward him for saving all of them, she'll give him the 33,000 square feet of farmland on the condition that he registers to a guild. So Alan accepted to defend the city and shook her hand. But he had just fallen for the biggest crypto rug pull of all time because when he got to that farming land, he realized it was a wasteland more worthless than an NFT. The following day at the Adventurer's Guild, Wolverine took Alan to the receptionists, but as he tried introducing himself, his stomach growled louder than a dragon, so she took him to a table and had him eat her cream pie. For his first G-rank quest, he would need to gather 10 melt grass herbs, but she told him to armor up in case some monsters appear. However, the adventurers appeared and realized he was the one who defeated the S-rank dragon, shocking everyone in the guild. Jake introduced himself along with Luke, and Lamia wondered how it would feel if his carrot penetrated her insides like the dragon. Before leaving, they told him that they would be joining his party, and he wondered why he was slowly being dragged away by nutcases to his death. Even though they'd support him, Alan was still a brokey and couldn't afford anything, so the receptionist gave him her defensive robe. After putting it on, her floodgates opened and she froze in space, but told him that she felt nostalgic looking at him and introduced herself as Helen before he left the guild. A few hours later, Alan had already gathered nine herbs, but saw a mysterious scale on the floor and asked Jake if he knew what monster it belonged to. But while it was an unidentified monster, Jake said it could be the Black Dragon God. And as soon as he let those words out, the entire forest was engulfed with a dark aura and the Black Dragon appeared before their eyes. The fear of seeing the dragon froze them in their place. But the dragon walked past them as if they didn't exist, and before it could disappear, Alan tried to look at its stats, but could barely get a glimpse, seeing that it was over 100,000. That night, Helen was running away from that before dying, but woke up from the nightmare to see that she was still in her uniform. The following morning, Alan's loser squad told the guildmaster that the dragon had enough power to destroy the entire country and saw that its name was Cherizard. When Helen heard that name, she collapsed on the table but tried to get up because she wanted to know everything about him. Alan went on to show them one of the scales he found of the dragon, and when Helen laid her eyes on it, all her memories started reappearing. She remembered her brother screaming for her as the dragon bit him down, ending his life in that moment. After regaining those memories, Helen fell unconscious on the floor. Wishing to learn more about Cherizard, he began heading to Helen's homeland. But a mailman gave Aelin a letter from his mother and ran off faster than the Flash. However, he came back to introduce himself as Rick's, but Alan told him that he ricks worse than an anime convention. When they got to the village, they saw that it was all left in desolated ruins. But Alan heard a voice speak into his head, telling him to come towards the sound. As he kept getting warmer, he arrived at a grave. 
and the ghost of a boy started talking to him. But Follies wondered if Aelin had finally turned schizophrenic. However, he tried telling her that there was a kid in front of him, but she couldn't see him at all. So the ghost introduced himself as Ray, saying that he's been waiting for the day when someone could hear his voice. At the same time, Helen felt a longing deep in her soul. Ray wondered where he got that robe. So Alan revealed that he got it from Helen and realized that it might be the reason he could talk to him, so he hugged Follies close to him. However, the feeling of being touched by a man destroyed her floodgate but she was able to see Ray floating above his grave. Alan grabbed her by the mouth, but Follies tried telling him she's not kinky. The ghost revealed that Helen was his and that this village used to be their home. In order to protect her mind, he had sealed her memories away, but begged him to save his sister from the danger that's coming. 